Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Swan, Global Sales Manager at Avatier Corporation. Today, I will be taking you through Avatier Password Station. But first, I would like to give you an idea of why organizations go with a solution like ours. In most organizations, the number one help desk call is a password-related call. What a great idea would be to eliminate those calls and have a hard dollar savings ROI on those inbound calls. The problem is, is that there's no self-service options for organization, there's unnecessary user downtime, there's increased help desk costs, security risks, and no password synchronization. What is the solution? Avatier Password Reset. We've been in the market selling this solution for over 12 years. It's a very mature solution that's been adopted by a lot of organizations. And the reason being is there's a lot of different self-service options, including web Q&A, text message, alternate email, phone reset, pre-network logon, and multi-factor authentication, which I'll get into in more detail. We can synchronize passwords across multiple systems. We can drive enrollment by leveraging our mass enrollment or forced enrollment feature. We support 30 languages out of the box. We have CAPTCHA, a service desk or help desk portal. It's a very customizable UI and it reduces help desk costs and incoming calls, freeing up your staff to do other value added activity. The value of this solution, if you're trying to purchase a solution or convince upper management, there is a hard dollar ROI that is easily calculated, calculatable. For example, this is an organization with 3,000 employees. Roughly, in a year, they get 36,000 help desk calls, of which, on average, 30% of those are password related. If we take that number, you have over 10,000 password related calls at an average cost of $17.88, resulting in close to $200,000 in annual savings with a solution like this. There's also a lot of intangible ROI metrics for enhanced productivity, uh, end user experience, freeing up your help desk, brand protection, that can all be factored into an ROI calculation. The beauty of this type of solution is it can li literally be leveraged by any industry and any organization of any size. These are just some of the global customers that are currently supported under the Avatier platform. Another nice benefit about Avatier is it offers a complete identity management solution. Self-service password reset is just one of the products that we offer, and it is not uncommon for organizations to start with that low-hanging fruit and then expand to other products down the road. This is my contact information. I'll show it at the end of the presentation again, but without further ado, I'll jump into the demonstration. In order to use Password Station, a user must first enroll. As I mentioned earlier, enrollment can be facilitated in a couple of different ways. The first option is to go through self-enrollment, which I'll be showing you here in a moment. The advantage of the self-enrollment is it familiarizes the user with the solution, and in the event they need to reset their password or unlock their account, they're going to be more likely to use the product as opposed to calling into the help desk, which is what we're trying to avoid. We also have a lot of tools that can be leveraged, notifications, the forced enrollment, as well as reports that we can run on who's enrolled, who's not enrolled, and invitations that we can send out to help facilitate that. The other enrollment options that we also offer are mass enrollment, which can be questions generated from a database, or it could be some predefined questions and answers that we would populate as a throwaway question that would allow the user to answer them and then update their enrollment information to, to better questions or questions that they're more familiar with. Again, advantages of that is that you're driving adoption, getting more people enrolled in the solution, allowing them to use it. Before I jump into the demonstration, I think it's important to note that what I'll be showing you is kind of an out-of-the-box look and feel, not only from a cosmetic standpoint, but from a functionality standpoint as well. So keep that in mind. We have a lot of flexibility on how you can change the branding of the tool uh, with our branding utility and the ability to modify the CSS. If you actually go out and Google Password Station, you'll see a variety of organizations that have used our that use our tool and have branded it with their uh, logos and such. That really helps drive user comfort, user adoption, which is what we're going after. Some examples, just to quickly show you: Cox Enterprises, I own a college, Build a Bear. So jumping into the solution itself, you are going to have a unique URL that's 
access via browser to your organization. When a user first accesses this, they're going to be prompted to put in their user ID. Once I've put in my user ID, if I wanted to do so, I could select from a language dropdown. I could set this up as your default browser settings, but the important thing to point out is that we have 30 languages that we support out of the box. I also have CapShot turned on that they would need to uh, click and then agree to the terms and conditions. Once they've agreed to the terms and conditions, there's going to be a quick page that's going to give them some quick instructions on the enrollment process. Now, the first time you enroll, you are required to provide your password. Reason being is if I knew what someone else's user ID was, I could essentially enroll on their behalf and then I'd be managing their account. Once I've provided my password, I am now prompted with my security questions. By default, we present three questions. By configuration, we present anywhere from one to seven questions. The questions that you present to your end user uh, are completely entirely up to you. Uh, you can leverage any of the questions that we ship with out of the box. You can retire them or create your own, and we'll work with you from a best practices standpoint to create good questions that are long-term in nature and conducive to your user community. The answers to the questions also can have a lot of stipulations put around them. What I mean by that is we can have them exposed, which I have for the purpose of the demo. I can have them hidden. Uh, we can enforce a minimum length to the answers. We can obviously eliminate the use of the same question or the same answers, patterns, sequences, as well as the use of any words within the question and the answer. I'll also point out the last question, in this case the third question, is what we're calling the semi-private question. What we're doing here is we're notifying the user that in the event they do call into the help desk, they may be asked to provide this particular piece of information, and I'll elaborate that on that here in a few moments. Once I've provided the answers to my question, I have this next page, which again is optional, which is allowing me to capture some mobile information. I'm leveraging a country and carrier, and that's my mobile number. We also have the option to uh, leverage a third-party provider like a Tropo or a Twilio if you wanted to use that. I'm also requiring the user to send themselves an authentication code. You probably just heard a ding there, and I, a four-digit PIN, one-time PIN, popped up on my mobile device that I need to provide in order to continue on the enrollment. The nice thing about this is, one, we validated that the information is correct, and two, that at least this person is in possession of this device, and later on, we can leverage this functionality to authenticate in a couple of different ways. Once I've provided that, uh, we have a page here where we're capturing a personal email, like a Gmail account or something, uh, that can be also be leveraged to send a PIN to. I can have them authenticate just like I did with the SMS code, but for the purpose of time, I'll continue on. This next page, again, another email address. This can be populated from Active Directory. This would be your corporate email. Uh, this email would specifically be used to send email notifications from our solution. I'll show you some of the email uh, options later on in the config, but there's close to between 35 and 40 different email templates that you can send out, ranging from successful enrollment, uh, too many failed attempts, successfully changing your password, as well as password expiration notifications. And then this last page is an optional feature. This is our phone IVR integration. So beyond just allowing a user to reset their password via a web portal, we can also allow a user to pick up the phone and call into the help desk like they normally would, but rather than getting a live person, we would prompt them through a series of recordings to enter in a unique identifier. In this case, I'm leveraging phone number, but it could be anything else, as well as a four to 10 digit PIN that they provided during enrollment. Once they provided that information, the system will allow the user to unlock their account or reset their password, and I can play a small snippet of what that could sound like here in a few moments. After the user has populated that information, which should only take a few moments, essentially the enrollment procedure has been completed. So I'm going to sign out here, and I'm going to present a use case to you, which is very common and a very popular feature within our solution, which is the Windows Credential Provider. We also offer this for a Mac. Uh, I have some screenshots here of an example of a Windows 7 environment, but this is applicable to Windows 8 and 10, where the use case is that the user is off the network, their corporate network, they're at home, they may not even be VPNed in, they hit control alt delete and they're prompted to put in their password and they do not know what it is. This is great for a remote workflow force, traveling workforce, where the user would typically be forced to call into the help desk or maybe even have to take their equipment physically into campus. 
What we do is we deploy a small DLL on each local workstation, which is a link that says, I forgot my password, click here to reset your password, however you would like it to read. And once you click on that, that will actually launch a secure browser, the same URL and browser that I just went through the enrollment process. We would allow the user to go through a self-service password reset, which I'm about to show you, and it would then cache that password on your local workstation, allowing you to use that new password that you just created to log on. Now, there are two caveats to that. One, you would need to have some sort of internet access, whether it be a pre-established Wi-Fi connection, tethered to your phone, a hardwire, and your password station URL or portal would need to be internet facing. As I mentioned, we also offer this for a Mac, similar concept. You would have a reset or forgot your password icon on the logon screen, uh, and you'd be able to conduct a similar procedure. So to launch that secure, so let's assume we launch that secure browser. We come in here, we put in your user ID just like you did during the enrollment process. Click that you're not the CAPTCHA, agree to the terms and conditions, and now you are presented with a variety of different self-service options that you can take on your account. Now these are the default options. Uh, by configuration, we can turn any of these on or off, uh, as well as add some other options as well, but these are kind of the most common. I'm going to start with a forgotten password as that's typically the number one use case and I can explain some of these other options to you as well. When I click on forgotten password, I have a lot of different configuration options. And what I mean by that is I have three different ways that this user can authenticate based on how I configured it and I'm allowing them to select how they would like to authenticate. Uh, we could also set this up at different levels. So if you wanted to have, uh, you know, a one, you know, a require the, e the user to answer their questions and then either provide a code that was sent to the email device or SMS, you can do that and just structure it at different levels. Uh, as you noticed earlier, we also have integration with RSA, with Duo, uh, with Semantic VIP, and I can just play some quick videos here in a moment to show you what that looks like. The idea behind this is the more options that we give the end users, the more conducive it may be to one user than another, allowing them to reset their password on their own and avoid that costly call to the help desk. The passcodes are pretty straightforward and I showed you that during enrollment, so I'm going to skip down to the questions because there's also some key things that I want to point out. The first thing I'll point out is I'll purposely mistype this question and you'll notice that the questions are cascaded. So what I mean by that is you never see the second, third, fourth question until you successfully answer the previous one, preventing someone from gathering the questions and trying to socially engineer the answers. The second thing that we can do is we can send an email notification to this user notifying that they mistyped the question. And the third thing that we can do is a soft lockout, which means that we will not allow the user to use password station for a certain period of time after they've mistyped their question uh, to meet a certain threshold that you've set. So that could be three, five, eight, or 10. Or we could do an unenrollment and notify an administrator. So if that threshold was met, we could actually unenroll that user from password station, notify an administrator, preventing someone from trying to just endlessly guess what the answers are to the questions. Once I successfully provide the answers to my questions, you may be presented with a page that looks like this. So as I suggested earlier, Active Directory, you can think of as kind of your hub account. In this case, it's clean. But we also have the ability to synchronize passwords across other applications that may not be AD authenticated. We support close to 100 different applications out of the box, ranging from on-prem app applications like SAP, Oracle, AS400, mainframe, as well as cloud-based applications uh, like Salesforce, Office 365, NetSuite, and so on. We also offer custom database applications, so depending on the type of call volume that you're currently getting, we'll want to prioritize those different applications and might even allow them to synchronize a password from a single portal now having the same password across multiple applications. So we would actually link those accounts to Active Directory or map them if you will so you can think of AD as your hub account and these other applications as spoke accounts coming off them. So let's say for example I want to reset the password on my Active Directory in a custom SQL app. I'd now hit continue where I would be prompted to create a new password. So if I purposely put in a weak password that doesn't meet the strength indicator and try and submit it, part of the solution that we offer is what we call Password Bouncer. And one of the things that Password Bouncer does is it allows you to set a more granular password policy. 
And when I jump into the configuration, I'll elaborate on this a little bit more, but what this will then do is tell you dynamically where you fell short in meeting that particular policy, which is what you see here down in red. So once I put in a password that meets the policy and hit continue, what's going to happen, oops, sorry about that. What's going to happen is it's going to go out to those various connected systems. In this case, it was Active Directory and that um, custom SQL app. And then it's going to come back letting me know whether my password change was a success or a failure. And in the event that it was a failure, it would typically provide some feedback to me as well as to why that happened. But in this case, our password change was a success. I've got the new password on both of these applications, which is actually the same password. Other options that you have is to unlock your account. If you were to do a forgotten password and your account was locked out also, it's going to unlock it at the same time. You wouldn't have to conduct both. We could do a change password, which would essentially be providing your existing password and then creating a new one. We could also allow the user to look at their account information. Uh, you, can also, you can also specify the fields in which you want to have that exposed. So just a little bit of feedback, a little self-help on uh, this user account so they can see what's been going on. And then finally, we can allow the user to update their enrollment information, which is that initial information that I provided, uh, allowing them to maybe change their questions, uh, change a personal email, update a mobile number. But in the event you wanted to update your enrollment information, you would be required to provide what your existing password is. That essentially is the enrollment and the self-help options from a self-service standpoint. I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we also have uh, other ways of authenticating. So I do want to play a short video for you, uh, which is our duo integration to give you an idea of what that would look like. Aviteer now offers integration with duo for multi-factor authentication to password station. In addition to answering security challenge questions, Users can now select from one or more multi-factor methods to further secure a password reset operation. Duo Mobile One-Time Passcode sends a numeric code to the Duo application running on a user's registered iOS or Android device. Enter the code to reset a forgotten password. Duo Push sends a confirmation action to the Duo mobile application on the registered iOS or Android device. Accept the confirmation to continue resetting your forgotten password. Duo SMS sends a text message with a numeric code to the registered iOS or Android device. Retrieve and enter the code into Password Station to reset your forgotten password. Aviteer's Password Station and Duo multi-factor authentication are working together to secure your environment and to protect the identities and passwords of your users. So as I mentioned, that's a quick video on the Duo integration that you can leverage. The other type of self-service option that I want to point out is our phone IVR. So I do have a, another quick uh, video on what that could sound like. We obviously can change the audio on that, uh, but this should give you a pretty good example. Uh, there are three different ways of authenticating via the phone IVR. I will be demonstrating the pin reset, uh, but you can also uh, reset your password by leveraging an RSA token or voice biometrics. So here is the phone IVR self-service reset. Hello, you've reached the password station self-service system. This system will reset your password or unlock your account after gathering your information. When you're done here, simply hang up. To authenticate with your security token, press 1. To authenticate with your voice, press 2. To authenticate with your PIN, press 3. First, please key in your 10-digit office phone number with area code, followed by the pound key. Thank you. Now, please key in the 4 to 10-digit private PIN number you chose when you enrolled on the website. To reset your password, press 1. To unlock your account, press 2. Okay, here is a new password. Sad, exclamation mark, at symbol, hot, 
To clarify, that's sad. Spell the following way. Uppercase S, at symbol, lowercase d, and then exclamation mark, and then at symbol, and the last part is hot. Spell the following way. Lowercase h, lowercase u, plus sign. To accept this new password, press 1. To hear it again, press 2. To decline and generate a different password, press 3. Your password has been changed. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. So hopefully that gave you a relatively good understanding of the different self-service options that we offer for your end users. So shifting gears here a little bit, we just went over uh, the enrollment of Password Station, uh, the self-service options, the phone reset, and the ability to leverage different ways to authenticate to reset your password. I now want to touch on the Help Desk module. Now this is part of the core bundle of our uh, solution, and the purpose of the Help Desk model is not to replace uh, anything that you're using right now. It's just an additional tool for your help desk staff or uh, service desk that are taking these inbound help desk calls that are password related or any type of call for that matter that you want to authenticate a user. So obviously we're trying to avoid this, but it does happen from time to time. A user calls into the help desk, so Hunter calls in. He gives me his user ID, which I then type in here, and I hit continue. You'll now notice on this next page that I have some limited capabilities that I can take on this user's account. And what I mean by that is I can look at their account information, I can send this user an invitation, and this can be sent in a variety of different languages as well to help facilitate the enrollment. So it's one of those things where you can, you know, train your help desk staff to say, hey, happy to help you reset your password now, I'm going to send you an invitation so that you can, you know, take advantage of this tool and do it on your own next time and don't have to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning. The other thing that we can do is we can view this user's audit log. So you can see some of the recent activity that I just took with this account, and this will allow the help desk to kind of match up with what this user is telling them and what's been going on from a historical standpoint. We can also unenroll the user, and we can see other applications that are associated to this user beyond AD. More importantly is we have the ability to verify this user's identity. If you recall that third question, that semi-private question during enrollment, that's this question right here. We can send them an authentication code. I could also turn on predefined fields from Active Directory that I don't have configured right now, but it is an option. Once I provide one of those answers and I submit it, and assuming that the answer is correct, if it was not, it would give me feedback otherwise, I now have some expanded capabilities that I can take on this user's account. I can conduct a quick password reset, which again can be across all the applications that are applicable to this user, where I would provide a default password or a randomly generated password and force the user to change their password on next logon. Or I could give the user um, a, do a conduct a change password, where again, this is across all of the applications, but in this case, it would be like similar to a forgotten password where the user would provide their new password, confirm it, test it against their strength policy, and again, force them to change their password on next logon. So a few really nice features about leveraging the help desk. One, we have the ability to verify a user's identity when they call in. Two, we can reset passwords across multiple applications from a single portal without having to go into those applications directly. And the third thing is, is we've now consolidated all of our password reset actions into the Aperture, um solution, both self-service and help desk, which makes the out-of-the-box reporting that much more powerful. So if you look at the focus on the reports here that are in green, these are the ones that are associated to password station. We can run reports and search by different date range, um, domains, users, on all the self-service activities that we're seeing. We can look at the particular individuals that are still calling into the help desk. We can look at our enrollment, who's enrolled, who's not enrolled. We can also look at the different type of emails that we've been sending out, as well as offer the ability to um, create custom click reports. So the, the nice thing about the reporting is it really helps allow you to look in, make sure you're getting the utilization. If you're not, uh, make the appropriate measures, internal marketing, uh, to get those particular divisions, individuals, units that are not using the solution to leverage it. Beyond the reporting, 
all this information is kept track of in our audit log, which is stored in a SQL table. We can tie this in with your existing ticketing system if that's what you wanted to do so and open and close tickets there, as well as some SIM or syslog integration if you're using a third-party notification tool like a Splunk or something of that nature. So just as in as kind of a summary, so far we have gone over the self-enrollment, the self-service password reset and different options, the help desk module, we've touched on the audit log and the reporting. At this point, I'm going to shift gears again and get into the configuration and give you an idea of what this looks like to set up. Just like the end user experience, which is simple and easy to use, we've tried to do the same thing with the configuration as well. And what I mean by that is it's all on a .NET architecture. There's no coding, scripting required. It's all point, click, save. I'm not going to go through the entire configuration of the solution, but I'll give, touch on some main areas which will give you a pretty good idea of what this looks like. The first thing I will point out also is these little play buttons and question marks that you'll see throughout the configuration. These are redirects to our online knowledge base or wiki, which you can get access to, which has got an abundance of information and videos on what the different configuration options do. We, of course, will provide professional services initially to help you with this rollout uh, and get you up to production. But to give you an idea of some of this information, you've got architectural diagrams uh, that lay out what this could look like by leveraging a reverse proxy if you're exposing this to the outside world. We have diagrams on a single data center with high availability, uh, leveraging load balancers, uh, dual data centers with high availability, a lot of different options that you can leverage. Also in the configuration, we have um, information for the different product modules. Uh, we have information on the different connectors that we can build out. So those connectors that may be beyond Active Directory, you can download the most recent version. And we also have an installation guide to help facilitate that that includes server requirements. This is an on-prem solution. It's leveraging Microsoft technology, anything from 2008 up, 3264-bit. Uh, uh, it's a physical or virtual server, as I said earlier, with IIS, and it also leverages a SQL database for the audit log. So jumping back into the configuration, Really what you're going to do is click on the particular product that you're looking to leverage, in this case, Password Station and Password Bouncer I'll touch on, and then you're working your way through these different options. So I mentioned at the beginning of the call you have these different authentication options. This is selecting the level and the different authentication type and simply saving your changes. We have different email templates as well. Uh, the email templates are extremely easy to set up. You simply check the Enable box, update your subject, update your message, and you can also, they're all HTML enabled as well. And there's a lot of different uh, email templates, like I said, probably the most common and important ones are your password expiration notifications to try and allow users to proactively change your password before it expires. As I suggested also, we are supported in 30 different languages. This could be set up where your browser settings, your language dropdown, or a language selection page. We have a license status page, which shows you how many licenses are in your domain, how many licenses you purchased, and how many are in use to give you utilization. And you can also run reports right from here to see who those particular individuals are. Jumping down to the security tab, this is really where the majority of your configuration options are, are set up. With respect to the questions, how many questions do you want to present to the user? How many failed attempts? What's the minimum length in any sort of repeating sequences or characters that we want to set up? Do we want to send ver have the user require a verification code during the enrollment process? Setting up the credential provider or the pre-network logon for both Mac and Windows clients. From an end user perspective, what end user options do we want to allow for the, the end user to select from? Do we want to enable CAPTCHA? And the same thing goes for the help desk. What help desk options do we want to give? So if you recall, I was using the last security question as well as an SMS code, but as I suggested, you can also use predefined fields from Active Directory, a series of questions. You have a lot of different options. 
From a question standpoint, you can select from any of the questions that we present. You can retire these questions and you can also create a new list of questions. These can be presented in different languages as well. And you also have the ability for those that you may be international organizations to create different lists of questions based on OU. So a good example of that would be, what state were you born in? Wouldn't it be a great question for people you know, in Europe? Jumping to the password bouncer, this was the complexity policy that I was referring to. So allowing you to create a more complex password policy beyond the Active Directory policy that you may be using. And this could be minimum length, maximum length, forcing characters, lowercase, or uppercase, not allowed, and the position in which they're presented in the password. We can do the same thing for special characters. We have a word filter list that will query you know, various dictionaries. We have a custom dictionary feature, which is very popular, where you can populate different words that you did not want to allow users to use within their password. So for example, if I didn't want anyone to use password, I could prevent that, use, that word, or you could import a list of words as well. We can eliminate patterns. And then more importantly, is we have the ability to assign these different policies to different authoritative source, OUs, groups, users, and so on. So a lot of flexibility and capability within the, the password bouncer tool. And really what we've noticed is more and more organizations are increasing the password complexity policy and requiring users to reset their password on a more regular basis, which is driving more calls to the help desk with a solution like this, not only can you enhance security with a more stringent password, but you can help reduce those help desk calls as well. That is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope this was beneficial. Uh, if you should have any questions, uh, my contact information is right there on the screen. Please do not hesitate uh, to contact me directly. I'd be more than happy to go into this in more detail, discuss pricing with you, uh, and start reducing those help desk calls. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.